Good morning, FCF Church. Happy New Year on this wonderful Sunday morning. Um, please join us as we worship our Lord and Savior this morning with the start of fire.
Happy New Year to everyone. And um, I asked the Lord a few days ago what he would have me to share before we do the confession. And it didn't take long. And he told me, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now that's out of Isaiah 43. And uh, we've had a tough year in 2020. And with this virus and uh, lots of other stuff going on. But we're looking forward to a new year. And uh, at the beginning of, of Isaiah 43, he talks about fear not. And we've gone over that last Sunday about the fear nots in Isaiah. But then further into the chapter, it says, Remember not the former things. Behold, I am doing a new thing. I will make rivers to flow in the wilderness and streams in the desert. So that's what we're looking forward to where God is on the throne, and he, he has been all the time, but where he shows up in mighty power, and uh, where we as a church, we're empowered by the Holy Ghost, and we're looking forward to a new day, a new year. It's also Communion Sunday normally, so if you want to just draw closer to the Lord and just renew your covenant in his blood, and his broken body, and just as we don't do it corporately, you can do it in your homes and just have communion with him. And it's going to be a year where I feel we need to just draw closer to the Lord because the church needs to rise up. God wants to do great and mighty things through the local church in this coming year. We're not going to be backed into a corner or against the wall. We're going to rise up as believers, and we're going to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, get a fresh infilling of the Holy Ghost, get a fresh empowerment of his spirit, get a new vision for the coming year. And God wants to use the church. He always works through people. So as believers, it's preparation time. We can get ready. We can get strengthened. And it's not a time where just we're kind of waiting for something to happen or waiting for something to the virus to go away. It, we're going to be active during this time. We can get built up in the Lord because the Lord wants to use us as believers mightily in these last days. 
I also um, <clears throat> looked at um, Hebrews 10, and there it says, not neglecting to meet together. Well, we can't meet together legally now, but it says, not neglecting to meet together, but encouraging each other, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. And we do see the Lord's day drawing near. We see that we're in the end times with all that's happening. So not neglecting to meet together. If we can't meet together corporately in a building, you know, let's encourage one another. Let's phone each other as someone comes to mind. Phone one another. Let's encourage one another. If we have the Connect group on Zoom, let's connect. Let's be together as much as we can. So we're not just doing our own thing. We're doing God's thing. And I think that's very important. And encouraging each other. There's a lot of discouragement going on. So we need to encourage one another. And there's various ways of doing that. And all the more that you see the day drawing near. And so we can also pray for more hunger. Because the church has been so comfortable and so um, casual about things for so many years because we've had it so good. So I think we need to just rise up, get hungry for God, get passionate about what he's passionate about. Um, more prayer, more of his passion, more peace, more power, and just get fired up. I believe that's very uh, um, That'll be a very good thing to do. And also, the Lord said, the parable of the soils is going to be important. What kind of soil are we? Like if we're just sitting around and we're just kind of by the wayside, that's where the seed fell, just by the wayside. It never really grew up. Or we can, it can, the word falls on rocky soil and it starts off good, but it can't bear fruit. And or the cares of this world, and there's many things going on, can consume us and then we won't bear fruit either. So let's determine we want to be that good soil so that we're, the word of God falls into our hearts and it bears fruit and we can amount to something in the kingdom of God. So I would really encourage you, just seek the Lord more fervently, pray more fervently, get in his face, be more intimate with Jesus. We've just been through the Christmas, Christmas season where we've, worship Jesus in a manger, but he's no longer in the manger. He's no longer in the tomb. He's our risen Lord. And so let's worship him. Let's draw near to him and let's get closer to him. And he'll get closer to us because we're one in him. And like I said before, we can celebrate communion and just celebrate that covenant we have with him, that partnership. And um, we will rise up and be the church that Jesus wants us to be, the church which is his body. Let's do the confession. Let's mean it because we are children of the Most High God. We're empowered by the Holy Ghost. He's equipped us and he's anointed us and we're accepted and approved. What a blessing to be children of the Most High God if we just meditate on that a little bit. Um, it'll put some joy in our hearts. So let's say it together. I am blessed. I am redeemed. I am forgiven. I am loved. I am healed. I am free. I am prosperous. I am talented. I am creative. I am confident. I am secure. I am disciplined. I am focused. I am prepared, I am qualified, I am determined, I am equipped, I am empowered, I am motivated, I am valuable, I am anointed, I am accepted and approved. I am not average, not mediocre, I am a child of the Most High God. I will become all that I was created to be. Amen. Thank you, Father. We are not average. We are not mediocre. We are your children. We are partakers of the divine nature. And I thank you, Lord, for a fresh fill infilling of your Holy Spirit to empower us and to equip us and to prepare us to go forth as your mighty army, as your warriors, and as your children, as, as part of the family of God, empowered by the Holy Ghost, Father, to do the works of God. And we look forward to a mighty 
wonderful year in the Lord, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. late for curfew? What are you doing? I'm making a late night sandwich like your grandma doesn't like me to. <laughs> your secret's safe with me. Mm -hmm. Same. So how was your party? Lame. I don't get what's so special about New Year's. Oh, what's special about New Year's? Yeah, I mean, you stay up late, everyone says, Happy New Year, and then a ball drops. Let me tell you something. I remember a year, uh, you were just born. It was a very difficult year. You may not believe this, but there was no toilet paper to be found anywhere. Gross. Well, that wasn't even the half of it. People couldn't shake hands, they couldn't hug. You didn't want to leave your house or you're afraid you might get sick. And masks, everyone was wearing masks everywhere. You couldn't tell if somebody was smiling or frowning. That sounds weird. You, you couldn't go visit with family, not even at the, the holidays. Yeah. Then what happened? Well, that's the best part. Then God got us through it, just like he always does. That's why I like new. See, God says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. New, my dear, gives us a, a different perspective on things. Like on toilet paper, I guess. <laughs> I mean, just because it's new doesn't mean it's going to be good. You're right. You're right. That is why we hold on to the words of Jesus, who said, uh, in this world you will have troubles, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. That, boop, is why we celebrate new. Grandpa, mm -hmm. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Do you want to eat a turkey? Happy New Year. Welcome to Faith Christian Fellowship. It's an honor to come into your home and share God's word with you. And we are excited about what God is doing. He is really faithful. And Linda and I, we pray for you and your family that you would experience God's best this coming year. And we're believing that you will experience his goodness, his favor, and his blessing in ways that you never even thought would be possible. Just like the video illustrated, God saw us through 2020, which was a challenging year. In spite of all the unexpected things that happened over the past 11 or 12 months, God remains faithful. And I want to encourage you, he will continue to remain faithful to his promises. We're never alone. We're never without God. And we're never without help in this world. We love you and we appreciate each and every one of you. And may God bless you. I'm inviting you to join me in receiving from the Lord through Holy Communion at the end of the service. Please be prepared with some bread and some juice. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we acknowledge you as our Lord and our Master. You truly are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we thank you that your promise is true, that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And every tongue that rises against us will be shown to be in the wrong. You have moved powerfully in our behalf. And Father, I just lift up those, Father, that are fearful. Those that are struggling with the events that are happening all around us. And I just speak peace to you. I just declare that you will experience God's favor in this coming year. 
And for those that are struggling in their bodies, that have some type of infirmity, some type of sickness, disease, I speak healing. I speak wholeness. I speak health to you. I decree and declare that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. God sent his word and he healed you. And Father, we just thank you that you are our way maker. And no matter what we're facing, no matter what we're going through, that you always make a way of escape. You always lead us to triumph. You always direct our steps and prepare a table right in the midst of our trouble, right in the midst of our difficulties. And we thank you that you're always turning what the enemy has meant for our harm and our destruction. And you're always making it work out for our good and for your glory. And Father, we thank you that we're never victims, but always victors in Christ and more than conquerors. And we thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, we want to thank you for your faithful support and your generosity and how that you have been such a blessing to the ministry this year. We know that God is our source. Uh, the economy is not our source. Our jobs are not our source. Our businesses are not our source. Our investments are not our source. But God is our source, and he has never run out. He is an unlimited God. And when we trust him, and when we give out of a cheerful heart, you know, the Bible says that God is unwilling to do without a cheerful giver. Those whose heart is in their giving, and God is no man's debtor. He watches over his word to perform it. And I want you to know that he will meet your needs according to his riches in glory by one Christ Jesus. He's a faithful God. He said that as if we sow sparingly, we will reap sparingly. But if we give generously, we will reap abundantly. And that's the kind of God that we serve. He's an abundant God. He's always wanting to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we would ask, think, or even dare to imagine. So as we prepare our hearts to honor the Lord with our giving today, I just want to share a few options that will make your giving easy. I just encourage you to go online to our website at fcfchurch.ca and simply click on the Give button, and you'll find there are many options for you to choose from that'll make your giving to the church easy, safe, and secure. Our first option, of course, is e-transfers. E-transfers can be sent to Faith Christian Fellowship by emailing fcfgive at mymts.net. Also, if you belong to the Access Credit Union, you can give to the church through the pay bills section. If you prefer to send your donation by mail, please use the address that's on the screen. Also, if you would like to drop off your gift at the church, you can do so during regular business hours. We believe that every tither and every giver will experience God's highest and best. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that we can come to you in the name of Jesus on the behalf of our faithful tithers and givers. Father, we thank you that you are an unlimited God and that you are not limited by the economy. You're not limited by our job. You're not limited by what we don't have. You are uh, the one that meets our needs in an unlimited way. We believe that you're opening doors of opportunity for every tither and giver in ways that are just outstanding and that would astound us. We thank you that you have given each tither and giver the ability to obtain wealth and to do our part in establishing your covenant on the earth. Thank you, Father, that we are the head and not the tail, lenders and not borrowers, and that, Father, that you have caused us to operate out of your great abundance. Thank you for rebuking the devourer for our sake. And we declare, Father, that we're blessed and we cannot be cursed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And again, we want to thank you so much 
for your giving. Again, Happy New Year to each and every one of you. We're so excited about what God's about to do. I want to talk to you today about moving into the unknown. Regardless of what happened in 2020, New Year is a time for God to do something fresh, something new in our lives. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 says, Do not remember the former things. Do not consider the things of old. Behold, I'm about to do a new thing. In other words, I'm about to do something new. And he is up to something new. He's wanting to do things in our lives this year that he hasn't been able to do in the past. You know, at this time of the year, we like to make New Year's resolutions. We want to be better. I've never met anybody that is hoping that they'll be, uh, you know, um, more in debt this year than they were last year to be in rougher shape physically than they were last year. Almost everyone I meet, they want to be better. They want to be closer to the Lord. They want to have a, a, a relationship with Him that is more intimate than what they had last year. They want to be in better shape than they were last year, physically and emotionally and physically and financially. And I'm just reminded of one girl that was talking to the Lord about her 2021 resolution for this year. She says, Lord... I'm asking you that you would give me a fat bank account and a slim body. Please don't mess it up like you did last year when you did just the opposite. As we move into the new year, I just want to invite all of you to consider joining us for a week of prayer starting tomorrow, January 4th, Monday to Friday, for a time of fasting and prayer so that we uh, can start the new year off just seeking the Lord and allowing him to show us things to come and that he can prepare us for the things that he has prepared for us. Now, we cannot meet corporately uh, like we would like to, but we have the prayer targets listed online for each and every day. So we want to, uh, you to take advantage of that. You know that 12 months ago, the body of Christ was so excited about 2020 Everyone was talking about double vision, 2020. Here we've got a new year. We've got a new decade. And it was going to be the year of overflow. It was going to be the year of supernatural increase. It was going to be the year of change and the manifested power of God in demonstration. Now the good news is that many of our people and many people around the world is a, experienced exactly that. They experienced increase. They experienced God's supernatural favor in their lives. They experienced the goodness of God in unprecedented ways. For example, even in Iran, which is a nation that is very hostile towards Christians, they were forced by their government to stay home from March on because of the COVID social distancing uh, regulations. And what they did is they increased the internet uh, band so that people could would stay at home and they would be on their computer. And CBN, which is the Christian Broadcasting Network, says that the revival that's taking place in the world today is is happening in its greatest way in Iran. What's happening is young people have been going online and they've been searching out different things that they're interested in. They were, they were disappointed with their government, disappointed with the way the economy was going, and they're looking for options. And there's thousands of them since March have been coming to the Lord in this closed country. And I just want you to know that's the kind of God that we serve. During COVID in a closed country, here's God reaching reaching out and he is reaching young people and they're coming to him by the thousands and it's just the way he is and I, I know that our God can do the impossible in fact impossible is where he starts we think of things that can be done or maybe should be done or could be done but God looks at things that people say can't be done and that's just where he shows up and shows off because he's an unlimited God He's unlimited in mercy. He's unlimited in power. He's unlimited in resources as far as his people are concerned. And that proves again to me that 
the answers that we need today are not political in nature. We have been dealing with an invisible foe this year, and we have to understand that the, these issues are spiritual, and that there is no president, there is no king, there's no prime minister that can save cities and nations. Only Jesus saves cities and nations. But on the flip side of that, there is no king. There is no prime minister. There is no president that can stop God from pouring out his spirit upon cities and natures and nations as we have seen. Our God is an unlimited God. And what he started last year, he's going to accelerate this year in a great and a powerful way. And just like we saw in the video clip with the old timer reminiscing with his granddaughter about this day that were people we lived in a time when people couldn't shake hands. People couldn't gather together with family. People couldn't go out and meet like they usually met. People wore masks everywhere they went. And there was a worldwide shortage of toilet paper because of the pandemic. And I, I just remember how his granddaughter said, Oh, Dad, Grandpa, that must have been gross living in those times. And he said to her, he said, You know, God was faithful. God saw us through it. We could depend upon him. And he looked after us. And I just want you to know, that's the kind of God we serve. And I just, I don't know when the pandemic began to affect you. Maybe it was the first time that you went to the grocery store and you went to buy something and someone said, no, you can't stand there. You got to step back six feet. Okay, we'll tell you to move when it's time to move. Then you, then you can move and take the next step. Uh, or maybe it was when you had a loved one that was in the hospital or in a care home. And you wanted to see them. You wanted to visit them. You wanted to encourage them. But you weren't allowed to go. And the only way that you could visit them was maybe through a window that you could wave at them or you could, you could talk to them. Maybe you could talk to them on the phone. But you couldn't personally see them. You know, it was like a bad dream last year in some instances. We couldn't have a normal wedding. We couldn't have a normal um, graduations. We couldn't have a normal funerals. It just seems like things were, were, were changing. Maybe you were first uh, affected by COVID when you saw that the universities were empty, the schools were empty, the shopping malls were empty, the great sports stadiums were empty. And little uh, businesses, uh, mom and pop businesses, the small businesses were forced to close. And some of them will probably not reopen. And then big box stores and online giants were prospering like never before. And it makes you wonder with all the protests and all the rioting and all the looting, what is going on? And with all the election drama, and, and the fear people have, are we becoming a socialist? Are we becoming a communist nation? But I want you to know, Jesus is on the throne. The, the time that it affected Linda and I the most, when we first enter, were introduced to the craziness of COVID, and this pandemic was in March when our son was getting married. Our youngest son was in Kuwait. And he had a ticket to go out a certain day to fly to the West Coast so he could be part of the wedding. And the day before he was supposed to go, he got wind through the grapevine that the border was being closed. The airport was going to be closed at midnight. So he grabbed just a few things and he ran to the airport. Unfortunately, he had canceled his uh, phone uh, plan before he went. And he just had Wi-Fi at the airport. And then he phoned us and says, start working on a new uh, uh, ticket. And so we worked at it and worked at it. We finally got it. And then we couldn't get a hold of him. And to make a long story short, he was the last person to get out and get onto that airplane. And he got out just, just minutes before the midnight hour. And, but he made it. And thank God there's, there's a lot more to this story than what I'm sharing. But we are so thankful that he got where he was going to go. You know, that, that God is, is big. He, he's great. He looks after us. And we got to the wedding. And it happened to be that the venue was closed down just hours after the wedding. 
And if, uh, if, if we had have had it a day later, it, could have, it would have had to have been canceled. God was good. And then we had another experience with COVID. My dad had a heart, slight heart attack when we were at the wedding. And when I got back, he was asking for me. And they wouldn't let me go. I couldn't see him. And, and it was hard for him. He couldn't understand that. And virtually, my dad at 98 years of age, virtually died alone. And so we, we know what a difficult season that had been. But I, I want you to know that, that God is still faithful. The, the, the church was closed off and on during these last 11, 12 months. But, but I want you to know God has been faithful. And you, the people of God, have been faithful. And it, it's just like... 2020 seemed to take uh, many of the privileges, many of the things that we take for granted. It seems like those liberties and freedoms have been taken from us. But we must believe that what God has given us, no one can take from us. And that God is always making a way for us, even when it seems like there is no way. He is our way maker. I just want to bring out this point. That as we move into the unknown of 2021, we're either going to live a fear-based life or a faith-based life, depending upon what we're putting our trust in. In the middle of all the things that we do not know that are going to happen in this coming year, there are some things that we must know, that we must be rooted in, that we must be anchored in. First of all, we must know that Jesus Christ is coming back for his church. He's coming soon. Christmas season, which we just celebrated, is a reminder uh, of the first coming, the first advent of Jesus. But it also points towards the second coming of Jesus. With so many Christians all worked up and all worried about the cashless society, uh, about the Antichrist, about receiving the mark of the beast if we take the vaccine, uh, about... Uh, the one world government and all the problems that are happening in the world today. I just want you to know, I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for Christ. My eyes are on him. I want you to know that the next big event in the history of the world is not what Antichrist is going to be doing. It's what Jesus Christ is going to be doing. He said that before his coming, he's going to reap a mighty harvest throughout the nations. He's going to do a great work and cut it short in righteousness. And I am looking so forward to it. And also, I believe that the Antichrist can't even come until the church age is over and we are raptured out of here. In fact, Revelation 4 says that after the first three chapters of Revelation, there is no record of the church being here on the earth. And so all those things that people are so concerned about and so worried about, they're not even going to affect the church in the coming days. Hebrews 9, 28 says it like this. It says, Jesus will come again, not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to those who are eagerly waiting for him. I just want to encourage you to stir yourself back up about the expectation of Jesus coming, that you're eagerly waiting for him. You're anticipating him. His coming is the next event on God's prophetic timetable. Jesus is coming. He's coming for his bride. He's coming for his church. And we are to be ready. We are to look forward to that. The early church was so persecuted. They were so opposed by Nero, who looked like a type of antichrist. He was so mean, and he was so cruel with the gladiators and feeding Christians to lines and, and all the persecution and all the opposition that he presented to the church in that hour. But here's Paul's response. He says, what I want you to do for Nero, I want you to pray for those in authority. I want you to thank God for them. And it was so hard for the early church to understand that there's a kingdom that is greater than the kingdoms of this world. You know that the Roman Empire, it rose and it fell. And other empires have come and gone. But the kingdom of God will never fall. The kingdom of God endures forever. And just in a short time, that church that was so persecuted, and that church that was so um, 
uh, opposed. They overwhelmed and they overcame the Roman Empire. And they did it by having that fire of God in their lives. They did it because they had such an expectation that Jesus was coming soon. And they had to reach their families. They had to reach their friends. They had to reach their neighbors before Jesus came came back and they prayed even though the government was so corrupt even though the government was so vile and the society was so lewd they they prayed that that judgment would be stayed so that they could reach more of the unreached and tell more of the untold about the love of God revealed in Jesus and I believe that's the same today and I believe that really when we get into these other things and we're, we're all we're thinking about is the conspiracy of Antichrist and what the government's doing and what China's doing and, and what's happening with our cash, it, it's a sidetrack. It distracts us from who we should be thinking about, who we should be talking about, who we should be praying about. In First Thessalonians 4, uh, 14 and 16 it says the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout with the voice of an archangel with the trumpet of God first the believers who have died will rise from their graves then together with them we who are alive and remain on earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air then we'll be with the Lord forever so encourage one another with these words. This is the hour to encourage one another, to build one another up, to comfort one another, the, and that Jesus is coming soon. Let's reap that harvest. This isn't the hour to get on social media and begin to paralyze the body of Christ with fear of the things that are coming upon the earth. The Bible says that when you see these things begin to happen, it says, lift up your head and rejoice, for the, Jesus is coming soon. You know, after the rapture, billions of people will suddenly be out of this world. And there will be no Christians in government, no Christians in the educational field, no Christians in the political field, no Christian athletes, no Christian entertainers, no Christian um, husbands and wives and children. That uh, It's going to be a different world. All hell is going to break loose. And we need to recognize that this is the hour that before Jesus comes, this is the time to make sure our spouse, our children, our neighbors, our friends, our relatives are ready for the coming of the Lord. It should put a fire in our soul that we are going to make sure that no one is left behind, that no one is left out. It's time to get the good news out to as many people as possible. So let's keep our attention on what God is doing, not what the enemy is doing in this hour, because greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world and secondly we need to know that faith only works in the realm of the unseen and the unknown Hebrews 11 1 says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen one translation says faith is the confidence that what we hope will actually happen it gives us assurance about the things that we cannot see you know, walking with God is not like planning a vacation. You know, when you plan a vacation, you have it all mapped out. I don't know if you go on Google Maps or whether you go on Expedia or however, or travel agents, but you tell them where you're going and you work out a place, you get your hotels, you get your destinations. Or if you're going on a road trip, you, you put all the information in the navigation system and it shows you exactly how far you've got to go, the places you're going to stop. But walking by faith is not like that at all. God doesn't give us a lot of details when he's directing our steps. And, and, and he doesn't tell us many times what he is about to do. In fact, last year, 2020, I don't know if many people in the body of Christ had any earthly idea about what was going to happen in the earth. But because God wants us to walk by faith and not by sight. And so we don't like those situations. Where, that we cannot control, where we do not know what is happening. But God wants us to trust him. God wants us to depend upon him every step of the way. And he does not going to tell us everything that's going to happen in this coming year. He's not going to tell us 
everything that's going to happen. He's not going to tell us how it's going to happen. He's not going to tell us how long it's going to take for us to do what he's put in our heart to do. He leads us one step at a time into the unknown. And he instructs us to take a step. And we don't know how it's going to work out. We don't know uh, what's going to happen. And we just trust that he will show us the next step. And he just leads us step by step. When we trust God, we have to become comfortable with not knowing everything. Not knowing all the details. Not knowing what is going to happen. And not knowing how God is going to accomplish what he wants to do in our lives. And not knowing when he'll do it. Not knowing who he will send to help us do what we need to do. So at the start of this year, will you take a step of faith even if you feel uncomfortable? And when you have no idea how it's all going to come together? We tend to be nervous in situations we cannot control. Can you remember the first day of school? Remember going for that first interview? Remember the first day at the job? There's that uneasiness. We, we have that unsettledness. We, we're not sure of ourselves because we don't know how things are going to turn out. But these are the areas where we get the rewarded the most. This is what Abraham did. He left the familiar and moved into the unknown, and that's where he found his destiny. That's where he found his breakthrough. That's where he found his fulfillment in life. God told Abraham to leave the place he was living, pack up his family, all his belongings, and head out to a land that he had never seen. And because God requires us to walk by faith and not by sight, God didn't give him a lot of information. In fact, the Bible says that Abraham went out not knowing where he was going. You see, the world doesn't operate like that. If you had gone to the, your travel agent and said, now, uh, we need six tickets, they would ask you, where are you going? And if you said, well, we don't know that yet, they would say, well, we can't help you. Uh, come back when you know where you're going. But Abraham went and I'm sure he told his wife, he says, honey, I got some news for you. I just sold the house. I sold the business. I've got the kids out of school. Um, just pack up. We're moving. I'm sure she would ask him, Abram, uh, where are we going? I don't know. I don't know where we're going, but I know where to get out of town. Um, I don't know how Sarah took that. I don't know what she thought of that. But it was, it was the way God works. He just doesn't give us all the information at once so that we, we, we wouldn't trust him. We, he wants us to look to him. Abram wasn't given a seven-year strategy by God. He was just given enough information to get moving. I remember years ago, when Promise Keepers was really moving and they had uh, these big stadiums full of men worshiping God. And so uh, a bunch of churches in this area got together and chartered some buses. And we went down to Minneapolis and were part of the Metrodome to, to the meeting. But we stopped at one of the rest places on the way there. And there was one guy with us who had never uh, been introduced to these uh, these new faucets that are, are motion activated and so he is uh, he, he had gone to the washroom and then he's going to the sink and he's looking for the handles on the faucet and he's standing there and standing there of course uh, men are men and of course uh, he wasn't getting any help and they were they were asking him what are you doing and he says I want to wash my hands and he said well they said well just uh, just turn the handle he says there isn't a handle here and of course, and finally they showed him, you got to move. You've got to, you've got to wave something. You've got to move something. And as soon as he began to move his hand, the water came out. And that's the way it is with God's favor. That's it, the way it is with God's wisdom. That's the way it is with God's blessings. That if we're going to wait for everything to come together, if we're going to wait for everything to work out, then we'll be waiting all our lives because God works by faith. It's faith that pleases God. And so Abraham stepped out and he didn't even know where he was going. He didn't even know how he was going to get there. But he knew 
enough to get started. Recently, we had a couple uh, in the church that had a lot of decisions to make. And it just happened to be that there was a men's meeting coming up and uh, the, the husband said to his wife, he says, I think I'm going to go to the men's meeting. And she said, well, if you go, you press in because we need a lot of answers. We need some direction. There, there's things that we need to know exactly what it is that we're to do and how we should do it. And he said, sure, I'm going to press in when I get there. And so when he come back from the meeting, he was just all aglow and he was just he was just had just enjoyed himself at this men's conference and she said did you did you meet with god she he said it was just the most powerful time i've ever had in my life well what did the lord say he said the lord is my partner yeah i i know that but she said what else did he say no he just said the lord's my partner and of course we're looking for more than that we want to hear more than that we want to know details. We want to know information. Should we do this? Should we do that? But God wants us to know that he's with us, that he's in us, that he's for us. And if God be for us, what difference does it make what or who comes against us in this coming year? And we saw that couple in this past 11, 12 months move in a, a tremendous ways and even during this COVID restriction, they moved into blessings. They moved into overflow. They moved into increase. And they didn't do it because they had a lot of information. They had a lot of details. They did it because they knew something. They knew who was with them. And they knew that God would see them through. And they knew God would be faithful. And if God was leading them to do something, that he would make a way where there was no way. And I just want to encourage you this coming year, uh, don't get tied up in the details it's no time to get tied up in all the details this is the time that we get tied up in who's with us and who's for us and recognize that God works in the realm of the unseen in the realm of the unknown we all want to know more but we have to understand that we're not doing life alone that God is helping us at the beginning of this year as we move into the unknown, things are not always going to be logical. Things are not always going to make sense. Even in Abraham's situation, maybe your own family may not understand what God has in store for you. Your mind will always try to reason with you and give you all the reasons why what you have in your heart to do won't work. Everything does not have to be perfect. And you don't have to have all the answers but you're trusting God to take care of you. When we stop trying to figure everything out, God can be God in our lives. And he will begin to move in our lives because we, we function in the realm of the unseen. We function in the realm of the unknown. Abraham didn't have all the answers, but he moved out into the unknown anyway by taking a step of faith. Psalm 37, 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. And we must believe that. If you take that first step, not knowing all the answers, trusting that God knows more than you do, and that he will take you to where you need to be, then you're going to experience God's blessings every step of the way. By faith, Noah built an, an ark or a boat even though it had never rained before. I can imagine him telling his family, God just spoke to me to build a boat. They said, what's a boat? Well, that's going to be, there's a great uh, rain coming and uh, there's a flood coming and, and we're going to need a boat. What's rain? Well, he just had to understand that uh, it didn't make sense to him, but he had to obey. Moses, he, came, he brought the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage, and he's marching towards the Red Sea. There's a mountain range on his right, a mountain range on his left. The army of Pharaoh is bearing on behind him, ready to capture him and bring him right back into slavery. And he didn't know how he's going to get across the Red Sea, but he knew that God was leading him. And he trusted God. He moved into the unknown. And God made a way where there was no way. Living by faith 
is like using your headlights on your vehicle when you're driving in the dark. When you're driving in the dark, you see just enough to keep going. But you cannot see the destination uh, that's ahead of you. If let's say it's an hour away, you can't see the whole way to your destination. But you're not going to stop on the side of the road because you can't see everything. No, you recognize that as you travel, more light is given. The, the farther you travel, the more you see. And you get there safely. And it's the same when it comes to the realm and the dimension of faith. And that's the way it is going to be this year. God will give you just enough light. He'll give you uh, just enough direction just to get started. If you're waiting for everything to work out perfectly, you'll wait your whole life and you'll never re become everything that God has created you to be. We all want to be comfortable. But being in God's perfect will causes us to be a little uncomfortable at all times because we all want to know more. We all want to see more. We all want to experience more. But God wants us to walk by faith that we trust him. We, we, we lean on him. We depend upon him. God will lead you in situations that are over your head where your friends won't help you. And where you don't have the experience, you don't have the expertise, you don't have the resources, you don't have uh, all the things that you need. But if you have God, you have what you need. Because God plus you is a majority. We wouldn't have any problem stepping out to start a new business or go back to school or move to a new location. If we knew where the money was coming from, how long it was going to take that the right people would be there. If we had all the details, it would be easy to step out into the unknown. But it's just human nature to try to figure everything out. We want to know how everything is going to work out. I'm thinking of a young man in our congregation who just a, a short while ago was living in the park homeless. He didn't have proper clothes. He didn't have uh, enough to eat. He was just in a desperate state and he got himself into a place of hopelessness. He got himself into a place of discouragement and he didn't know what was going to happen with his life and he kept trying to figure out how he was going to break free, how he was going to get out of this funk, how he was going to get back in the race. And the more he thought about it, the, the more hopeless he felt. And thank God that his dad was praying for him and his brothers and his sister were praying for him. And the church here was praying for him. And some men from the church had uh, befriended him and they bought him clothes and they got him a place to stay. And they made sure that he was safe during the last winter. It was so cold and so hard they looked after him. But he still was in that place of despondency, in that place of discouragement. And they were bringing him to church once in a while. And then COVID came. And of course the church would be closed and be open and be closed. And finally, this young man just got to the place where he just didn't know what to do. He just couldn't handle it anymore. And he just called out to God and he says, God, you got to help me. I don't know what to do. You know, when you don't know what to do, you know what to do. He simply asked God for help. And I'm telling you, he is radically changed. He's a brand new person. God changed him supernaturally. I was on my way to a dentist appointment just the other day. And actually running late. And I, just as I was leaving the yard here, this bicycle comes flying towards me. Somebody's waving their hands and shouting. I was wondering, God, what is going on here? And here it's this young man. And he is testifying of what the Lord has done. He has moved into a new season. He is ready for this coming year. He just, just, uh, this just happened in this last month. How he's been radically changed. And it's because he just came to the place where he stopped trying to figure everything out, trying to reason everything out. He just trusted God, launched out into the unknown, and God met him. 
and he's a brand new person. Now he's been able to turn the page on the past and he's ready for the new year and for the new things that God has in store for him. It's so exciting. Proverbs 3 tells us not to lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge God and then he will direct our paths and make them straight. The unknown is where God pulls abilities out of us that we didn't know we had. It's the unknown where you will accomplish more than you've ever dreamt in your lives. In the Old Testament, there was a a young Jewish girl who had lost her parents and she had become an orphan and was raised by her uncle Mordecai who worked for the king of Persia. Through a series of unlikely events, and that's what happens when we trust God, uh, she was part of a worldwide beauty pageant and she was crowned the queen of Persia and she was renamed Esther which means star Haman the king's evil second in command talked the king of Persia into passing a law that all the Jewish people in the kingdom of Persia would be killed on a certain date when Mordecai her uncle heard of that He rushed to the palace and he told Esther, he said, Esther, you're going to have to go before the king and you're going to have to intercede on behalf of your people. And she said, well, it's just not that easy. She said, the law of the Medes and Persians is if you go into the king's presence, even though I'm his wife, unannounced, and he doesn't hold forth his scepter to you, I could be killed. And Mordecai said this. This is from Esther 4.14. He said, look, little girl, you're not just another pretty face. You've been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. This sentence has to be reversed. God was asking her to move into the unknown. And he said, if you remain silent at this time, Relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, and you and your father's house will perish. And who knows but that you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. She was so afraid that she could be executed. You know what fear is, the acronym for false evidence appearing real. And God was telling her, look, Esther, If you don't want to move out, I'm going to raise up somebody else. If you're not going to move into the unknown, somebody else will take your place. And she would have missed her destiny. She responded and said, if I perish, I perish. I'm going to go before the king. She fasted for three days. And then she took a step of faith. And she came before the king. And he held out a scepter. And with fear and trembling, you can understand that scripture says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I'm sure she was nervous. I'm sure that she uh, uh, was just absolutely uh, having to fight the spirit of fear off. Because if she had known the king was going to stretch forth his scepter, it wouldn't have been any problem. But she had no idea what he was going to do. She just simply had to trust God. And when she came to him and she sat down beside him. He said, "Uh, my dear Esther, what is it that you want? Up to half the kingdom is yours. What's your request? And to make a long story short, God turned everything around. And the people that tried to destroy her people were destroyed. The, The evil man that tried to hang his, her uncle, was killed on the very gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. God turned everything around for her good and for his glory. That's the kind of God we serve. I just want to encourage you. Even though she was nervous, she didn't have all the details. God's favor was released when she took the step of faith. If she waited till she had known more, uh, God couldn't have helped her. Dr. Lester Summerall says it like this, feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. So let your doubts die and let your faith live forever. Live forever. Trust and obey as as Esther did. And watch God turn things around for his, your good and his glory. Don't get caught up with all the doom and gloom today. 
about a one world order. Get your fire back. Get your faith energized. This is the time to be excited about what God is doing in this hour. He's reaping the precious fruit of the earth. Nothing's impossible with God. If he can reach into a, a hostile nation, a closed nation, that that's government is anti-God, and he can reach in and he can reach the young people of that nation during COVID, our God can do anything for us in our nation. If this young man who was recently hopeless came to the place where he finally stopped trying to figure out how he was going to get free and he called upon the name of the Lord and he was able to turn the page on his past and step into his destiny, God will do this for anybody. Like Abraham, move into the unknown even when we don't know where we're going, even when we don't know how everything is going to pan out. We just know that God is going to make a way for us this year that's going to be better than what we ever thought it ever would. Like Esther, don't let fear talk you out of moving into the unknown right into the fullness of your destiny. God wants to open doors of favor that no person can stop. We cannot leave 2020 like a victim and go into 2021 like a victor. God wants us to ask him for boldness to move into the unknown and to have the courage to do what he's asking us to do and he will open doors that we could never open for ourselves he will bring people into our lives that will help us he will give us the finances and the resources that we need to do what we could never do in our own strength and in our own power i just want to encourage you as we step into this year that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all we ask or think. He's just asking us to move into the unknown, knowing that he is going to do what we could never do in our own strength and in power. If you've never received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity right now. Whether you've never called upon his name, or you used to serve God and you want to come back to him, I want you to know he will welcome you with open arms. The good news is 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ put away all of our sin so that we would become righteous with his righteousness. We don't have to beg him to forgive us. He already has. It's just a matter of receiving by faith what his grace has so freely offered to us. If you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to, you to pray with me right now. Would you please pray with me? You know, the Bible tells us that now is the time to respond to his favor. Now is the day of salvation. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins and you rose the third day for my salvation. I declare that you are my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your spirit so that I can serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're a child of God in the family of God. Congratulations. Welcome to God's family. Before we close the service today, we'd like to start the new year as the body of Christ with a clean slate by taking the Lord's Supper, by taking Holy Communion together. If you have some bread or a cracker to represent the body of Jesus or some juice that would represent the blood of Jesus, we will remind ourselves of all that Jesus has done for us. Jesus said, when we take communion, we remind ourselves of him and all that he's accomplished for us. It is proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes again. What did Jesus purchase for us at the cross with his broken body and shed blood? I just want you to know that the bread represents his body, which was broken so that by his stripes we are healed. Jesus, our Passover lamb, was beaten and scourged so that we would be healed secondly 
The cup represents the shed blood of Jesus and the life is in the blood. It represents the shed blood of the new covenant for the remission or the sending away of our sins. He who knew no sin became sin that we would become the righteousness of God in him. Jesus took our sins so that we could have his righteousness. Before we partake together, I just want to remind you that communion is not a ritual to be observed, but it is a blessing to be received. First Corinthians 11 says, For I received of the Lord, which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. To partake, please hold the bread in your hand and just say this after me. Say, Father, thank you for the gift of your son. By the stripes upon your son's body, I declare that my body is healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is quickening my body right now. In Jesus' name, I believe I receive my healing. Let's partake together and let's receive our healing. Verse 25 says, in the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Remember that the shed blood of Jesus was poured out so that we would be washed and made holy in his sight. Take the cup in your hand. And say this, Lord Jesus, thank you for your precious blood. Your sin-free life is in your blood. Through your blood, I'm forgiven of all my sins. I am righteous in God's eyes. I'm the redeemed of the Lord by the blood of Jesus, and I say so in Jesus' name. Let's drink from the cup. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your great love and for the gift of Jesus to the world. Thank you that you were willing to go to the cross to redeem our lives. Thank you that you forgave all our sins and you healed all our diseases. Thank you for cleansing us with your blood so that we could be filled with your spirit and allow you to live your life through us in this new year. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thanks for being a part of our service. We trust you'll have a great week. And again, Happy New Year. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless.